everybody and welcome to 3D Archery. Greg here. All right, building a laminated bow. I'm telling you, if you can do it, you gotta do it because it, it is one, okay, it's time consuming. It can be frustrating. It can be aggravating. But when you do it right, it is beyond rewarding. All right, so we're talking about building a bow, right? First step was to build a hot box, which we covered in the previous episode. Now we're gonna build the press or the bow form. People use different names. What I'm going to work on, and I'm going to tell you how to build, is one based off an air hose. There's two ways of doing it, a band or tie down, and an air hose. I like air hoses better because it's constant pressure and it's just, there's more work up front, but less work at the end, all right? So, building air, an air hose press is pretty simple and straightforward. But before you start the build, you know, there's some things you need to know. we got to figure some things out. Just don't go in and say, I'm going to build a bow. Um, you got to think about the design. Because what type of bow you're going to build is going to determine what materials, how much effort it's going to be to build it. All right? And it's also going to determine how much wood. Long bows and recurves in general use a different length riser. All right? There's a lot of things. The tools required, the duration of the build. So what are the basic type of bows you can build? Well... Get the longbow, right? And if you do a flat longbow, it's the easiest to build. Because man, you just get it on a table saw, cut it, and you are 90% done with that form. All you gotta do is cut out the back of the riser, which is easy, and use a jigsaw. Then you can do a longbow with a little reflex and deflex, and that's it, and it turns down. So it actually curves up, and then it curves back out. A little more complicated requires a little bit more skill when cutting the form. And then finally we had the recurve. Now the recurve is the hardest because there is so much more. There's more angles, more lines and all that. So I would suggest doing a long bow first. Once you got that down, then add in some reflex and deflex in it. And if you're that motivated like me, go out and build yourself a good looking recurve. All right. Now that we know all the basic things you got to get ahead of time, the design of the bow, Right? What do you want the riser to look like? Do you want laminations in it? Do you want this or that? Get all that figured out, the weight and all that, then we can start gathering materials. And that's what we're gonna cover next. All right, everybody. There's not a whole lot of materials covered, but there is gonna be some in-depth talk about it. All right, the first thing you need is some wood to make the form. Now, you don't have to use wood. They have like that. PVC stuff that looks like fake wood. I've heard people use that. I have not. I cannot comment on it. But what I do is I use plywood. All right? Plywood is the easiest to use. Now in this video, what I'm doing is I'm making a press, a comb press, for 1958 Ben Pearson Palomino recurve. Right? The bow is 62 inches long and it's going to be 1.5 inches in width. All right? Now remember, when you're planning out your bow, this is an important step here, so write this down. The press has to be longer than the bow itself. From a, at least, at a minimum, of one inch to three inches longer than the bow itself on each side. Especially on a recurve. Because your air hose is going to, if it's a, a flat cut, your air hose will just stick out. But on a recurve, it curves down and the air hose has to stick out. So you got to give yourself a little bit extra room on each end of the form and you'll see it in the build part of the video all right so for my 62 inch bow that tells me i'm going to need wood at least 68 inches in length all right now i like to have a little extra on each side of mine just in case i make a mistake so my presses are a little longer than normals all right now how about how tall should it be I like to go 12 inches. You can go less, but again, I like to have a little extra in case I screw up so I can possibly make any corrections, right? So finally, we come to the thickness. It's 1.5 inches. Now, you can't buy plywood that's 1.5 inches, now can you? No, but what you do is you buy two three-quarter inch ones, sandwich them together, and you should have your 1.5 inch, all right? So, with that, with that in my mind, I know exactly what I want, and here's a good part of it. You can just go down to Home Depot and tell them that you need 68 inch 
but 12 inch pieces of plywood, two sections of it, and that's all you gotta buy. You don't have to buy the whole form of plywood. Now let's talk about plywood back for a second. I like to use the quality stuff, all right? The red oak, the fine grain, not the cheap pine nasty stuff. I, it's a little bit more expensive, but cutting it, sanding it, routing it, and anything else you gotta do is much easier when you buy the quality stuff for the tight grains. So keep that in mind when you're doing it. All right, so now that I got that, what else am I gonna need? Well, I'm gonna need some screws to screw them together. I'm gonna need a striper for mica or bow tough to go over the top of it to provide that smooth edge. You're gonna need some brackets to mount the top and the bottom together so they don't come apart with the ear hose on them. Now you can buy them, which I just easier, or you can make them yourself. You know what, it all depends on what type of person you are. If you're a do-it-yourselfer, adds that little bit more that you built everything. You're gonna need some wood blocks for the spacers on the brackets. When the bracket's right up on the side, remember the air hose has to fit in. The air hose is gonna be a little wider. So you put a little, about a quarter inch um, piece of plywood or piece of wood on each side and it pushes the brackets out just enough so the air hose fits in there perfectly, right? Now, you're gonna need some tape and adhesive. The tape and the adhesive is for that little Formica strip. Now you can either hold it down with tape or you can glue it permanently in place, all right? So, that's all the material you're gonna need. So it's not a whole lot of materials, right? But now we're gonna talk about the tools that you're gonna need. All right, everybody, tools. What tools do you need? Well, it's pretty simple. You're gonna need a saw. You gotta cut it, right? You gotta cut it no matter what. You can't get around it even if you're building a longbow. So the, the saw you can use, you can use a bandsaw if you got one. If not, I use a jigsaw, and a jigsaw works perfectly fine. Little handheld jigsaw, and you are done and good to go. You're gonna need a screwdriver. You're gonna need a file or a rasp. You're gonna need some clamps. You're gonna need a square. You're gonna need a sander or a sanding block, all right? You'll see this in the video, you'll understand better. You're gonna need sandpaper. You're gonna need a pencil or a marker, and you're gonna need a ruler or a tape measure. Right? That's the materials you're going to need. So now we got all our materials, we got all our tools, right? We went to Home Depot, Lowe's, or wherever, and we got our plywood, we got it cut to size. Now it's time to build our bow press. While doing this, you will start to see about the extra space in the ends that I spoke about earlier. And you'll see just where you want your bow to be in the form itself, height-wise. When cutting, take your time. Let the saw blade do all the work. The more precise your cut is, the less work you'll have to do in this shaping step. Screw the two halves together. I used a drill and made a small indentation into the wood so the screw would sit down in the wood. This can be important in the next step. This is the most important step of the build. Focus all your time and energy on the half of the form that will become the back of the bow, the front of it. Take your time and get it right. This part of the form must be level and smooth. To find out if it's level, 
what you do is you use a square and check it and you just run it on the side. If there's any gaps, make sure that you sand it down. Or one trick you can do to even out the dips is to use body filler. Apply it and sand it back down to the proper form. This strip is used to keep a smooth surface. Now you can glue it in place or tape it. In this form, I'm taping it down for now to see how it looks and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to glue it down. When I glue it, I use epoxy. Some people say you can use other type of adhesives, but I found epoxy works the best. The brackets. Now you can make your own brackets or you can order them. The brackets I'm using today I order from Bingham Products and I think they cost around $35. You know the nice part about these is they uh, took a bolt and they welded onto it a little handle to make it into a, like a screw. You know you can also just use bolts and nuts and for the bracket yourself you're going to need to drill the holes in. Now the ones they use here have two holes low, one high. I know people that do just one high, one low. All right, it's up to you. Now what are the brackets for? Well, they're used to hold the form together so it doesn't separate under the pressure of the air hose. Now for my forms, I use four brackets. Now I also know some people that only use two brackets on recurves but four on longbows. I don't know if that's some rule, but to play it safe, I always use at least four. Now here's an important part right here. When you're putting your brackets on, make sure that you give them enough room. They say the minimum is one inch, but I'd recommend a lot more. And what I'm talking about is the distance between the two halves. You got to remember between these two halves of your form has to go your bow, the pressure strip, and the air hose. And you don't want the air hose too much room or the air hose won't be able to press down. Too little room and the air hose won't press the right way. So you got it's a little thing you got to do by feel. All right, but once you have the distance set up, it's real simple. You lay the brackets on the side of the form. You mark the top and the bottom. Take your brackets off. Then you put your spacers over where the holes need to be. Secure the spacers to the form. Put your brackets back on. Mark the holes a second time. Then you can drill the holes and attach your brackets. I know it's complicated, but it works. Thank you.